What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real. We talk exclusively about basketball. We got an article that was published yesterday talking about free agency, one realistic signing for every team. Should be interesting. Our free agency is such a big part in team building, and this is a year where the free agency class is kind of lackluster in comparison to some of the other ones, and I think there's only like four teams with cap space this season, but you may see like smaller name guys that can help a team become a contender just by being back man in the rotation type things, and uh, who knows? It's a Bleach Report article, so it could be some wild stuff in here i don't really know leave a like subscribe if you're new shout out to greg schwartz again for another article let's get into it dwight howard is a cover athlete by the way good season let's see what they have him going because uh he may be on the move lakers fans i'm sorry to say that the first one is the atlanta hawks getting gordon Dragic, which makes sense um the atlanta hawks lacked playmaking when trey young was off the floor they had a lot of minutes where, where Brandon Goodwin was the backup point guard. And if you look at those numbers, when Trey Young was on the bench, the team is dreadful, ridiculously bad. And then when he came into the game, obviously things got a lot better. And they tried to address that issue throughout the season where they traded for Jeff Teague, bringing him back to Atlanta. But he's also a free agent. And Goran Dragic is better at the end of the day. But he is coming off an injury, and he is 34 years old. In this ideal role, he'd be a six-man. But I've heard around the league... Which makes it seem like I have sources. I promise you I don't have sources. But I'm reading other articles of people that do have sources. Thinking that Goran Dragic will come back to Miami on like a one-year, $16 million contract. Something related to that. Where it's like one year but a big bag. Um, but the way the Atlanta Hawks could potentially pry him away would be like, hey, here's a two-year deal or three-year deal for the 34-year-old. Because I feel like a lot of players will take the longevity stability over the one-year big bag. You feel me? Um, especially a guy that's coming off an injury from this NBA Finals. So I like the signing. He would add some scoring and some playmaking off the bench for the Atlanta Hawks, and they desperately need that. And there's rumors about them trying to trade their sixth overall pick to become content no, come playoff contenders. And signing Goran Dragic will help you be a playoff contender. Goran Dragic is really good. Then we have Paul Millsap with the Boston Celtics. This would make sense that maybe he's not back in Denver. They have a couple power forwards and, and Jeremy Grant that they'll probably prioritize. And then... Um, uh, Michael Porter Jr. playing some power forward position that they'd probably want to try to develop over him because they probably fit the timeline a little bit more. But the timeline is now, right? They were just in the conference final. So the timeline is now at the moment. Um, but let's see what they have. They have starting power forward slash six man for the Boston Celtics. And they would have to like get him for the low low because we know that Gordon Hayward is coming back with that 30 plus million dollar option. So they'd have to convince him to come to Boston for the cheap. And maybe that's what he wants to do. I can't say it'd be him going to a contender because he was just on a team that was also in the conference finals. So I don't know how you convince him to come back or come to Boston instead of staying in Denver. And maybe it's just that Denver don't want to bring him back. I don't really know. Next, we have Markeith Morris with the Brooklyn Nets. Sure, these are this is what I'm talking about. Like the Markeith Morris signing for the Brooklyn Nets, it's not going to be significant. Sure, he's going to play some playoff minutes for you, but it's not enough to be. This is why I'm going to pick the Brooklyn Nets over any other team. Uh, that'll be an okay signing, I guess, and it'll be cheap. Next, we have yeah, yeah, they should definitely go after Christian Wood. Now, the real scary thing about Christian Wood for me personally is I'm not completely sure of what we saw after the Drummond trade is real, and that's like the gamble you're going to have to take, right? He looked amazing after Drummond was traded, but he played for the team that was like the worst in the league. Somebody had to score buckets. Christian Wood was that guy, but the bright side is it, and it was like he shot like 37% on pick and pop threes, and then he was dominant down low with like 60-something percent. So like, he is good. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like how good. For the Charlotte Hornets, that's a gamble you should be willing to take. At 25 years old, you don't have a center because you got Cody Zeller and Bismack Biombo, and maybe you sign him instead of potentially getting James Wiseman. I don't know. I would take this gamble 100% if I'm the Charlotte Hornets, um, depending on what the pay would say. I think Christian Wood is really good, but it is an option. There's a, a chance that maybe he's not amazing, as good as he was. Because, like, come on, he averaged 22, 9.5, and, and 2. Those are magnificent numbers, but it's only 12 stars, smaller sample size. I would take that gamble if I'm the Charlotte Hornets. The Bulls, New Orleans Noel, that's a that's a surprise. Um, I think that our center on Mondale Carter is amazing. I, I do I do believe that he's about to have a, a breakout season, at least I'm hoping as a fan. But I do also really like Daniel Gaffer. He brings energy, he brings defense, he brings blocking shots and things like that. I would be okay with our center rotation. I think the Bulls should be targeting perimeter wing players because we can't keep our wings healthy. Otto Porter, Chandler Hutchinson missed a significant amount of time. I think that our ideal signing is a guy that can run some wing for us personally 
Um, Nerlens Noel, sure, that would be cool and all, because he's he's probably better than Daniel Gafford at this point in their careers. But I think the Bulls should be prioritizing wing depth over anything else this offseason. Then we have the Cleveland Cavaliers and Harry Giles. Sure, another situation where you're taking a stab and a shot in the dark on a, a guy with promising features about him. Remember, Harry Giles is like one of the top players in his class, you know, before he got injured in college, right? Or the end of his senior season. He got injured and then he started to fall off a little bit. But there's periods of time where he's in the game and he looks really good. And the Cavaliers, what else do you have? You know what I'm saying? And with Drummond coming back, probably having Harry Giles on the roster and playing backup minutes would be good. He's only 22 years old. Drummond, after this season, could be gone. And then, boom, maybe Harry Giles, your starting center of the future. I would take that gamble. I don't know what it will be for, but I would take that gamble and uh, see what he turns into. Next. Dallas Mavericks, Avery Bradley really, would be a really good pickup for them. Um, unfortunately, we haven't seen Avery Bradley play in a minute because he didn't go to the bubble. But a guy that plays great perimeter defense, um, a lot of players that I've talked to give Avery Bradley the credit of like he was one of the hardest players to score on in the league. So that's really good. And of course, he hits his shots as well. 3 and D is exactly what Luka needs throughout the course of his career. And it could be Avery Bradley. I like that. I like that. Then we have Marcus Morris to the Denver Nuggets. Wow. Okay, so that's very interesting to me. I thought that they were under the impression that we're going to let Michael Porter Jr. We're going to let bring back Jeremy Grant and let them be our power forward. But they're saying, no, nah, let's bring in Marcus Morris to play power forward as well. Marcus Morris is a good NBA player. Before he got traded to the Clippers, he was averaging ridiculous numbers, like 20 points per game with the Knicks. But he was doing it very efficiently. And then he got to the, the Clippers, and I felt like he struggled to find his role throughout the course of the year. And I, unfortunately, with the season being paused and everything, he didn't have time to really find his role. He's obviously a very good NBA player. I don't know what I, what I like him in Denver. I don't know. I don't know. Montrez Harrell for the Detroit Pistons. I've seen this a lot between the Detroit Pistons trying to get Fred Van Vliet or they're trying to get Montrez Harrell because they are one of the teams with some cap space this offseason. But, like, why? Legitimately, why? I, I feel like this would be a team that should be trying to shoot towards the lottery the next couple seasons. That's what I think as an outside fan. But this this would be weird to see him in Detroit and playing with Blake and, I guess, Derrick Rose. They're saying that they want to try to keep competing, but realistically speaking, they shouldn't be trying to do such things. Free Derrick Rose. Aaron Baines with the Warriors. Let's do it, man. I, I already see the Warriors as a team that's going to be really good this season. They are lacking a little bit when it comes to the depth. And Aaron Baines will come in and instantly be the best player on the team. Okay, He'd be the best big man on the roster. How about we go? I can go that far, right? Not best player on the team. Next. We have Jeremy Grant with the Houston Rockets. Now, that is a match made in heaven. An absolute match made in heaven. But how? Houston is capped out. Hard capped out. Jeremy Grant is going to be a player that is going to get a lot of offers. He showed he can be the last couple of years. Now, I don't I don't think the Houston Rockets, they would have to do some finagling to make this an opportunity. I, I don't see this happening. But, but how? he doesn't give you a, re, a way to do it. I think that's important. The article says realistic. So he, he believes there is a way, but like off the top of my head, I don't see that way being realistic. Jeremy Grant is a guy that will get a lot of offers. Um, he would fit perfectly in Houston, but I don't know if they would be able to do that. Indiana Pacers, Isaiah Thomas, bring him in. Isaiah Thomas deserves another shot. He said that he's done with the injuries. The hip is looking amazing. It feels amazing. He had a surgery. I want to see Isaiah Thomas back on the NBA team, even if that means it's on Indiana. I don't think Indi he is the Indiana type player. For sure, he's not. Um, they've had this like prototype of players that they've had throughout the course of their their uh, last 15 or so years. Isaiah Thomas doesn't fit that, but I would love to see it. Bring Isaiah Thomas to a team. W. Next, the Clippers and Tristan Thompson. I mean, they're going to lose out on Montrezl Harrell free agency. That's that's probably a given. And bringing in a guy that's similar to Montrezl Harrell in, in size and in, in energy, uh, Tristan Thompson. Great rebounder. Defense is really good. I wonder what the market is for a guy like Tristan Thompson. You know what I'm saying? That, that He's one of the interesting players of free agency this offseason. And if they have him going to the Clippers, I'm guessing that means his, his market ain't great because the Clippers ain't really got the bag to be throwing. Interesting, interesting. The Lakers, Carmelo, sure, sure. I The reason why this is cool is because there's no such thing as, at the end of the day, on a surface level, it's hard to say, like, oh, this is going to be a bad signing. This is going to be a great signing. It's just fun to see the potential. Having Carmelo Anthony with LeBron would be interesting at the end of the day. I mean, we've seen him team up before and Team USA things when they were younger in all-star games when they were younger. It would be cool to see him together. But I, I think that, that Melo wants to stay in Portland. That, at least that's the vibe I'm getting off 
from uh from him and the Portland Trail Blazers. But sure, he's 36. <laughs> Shout out to Melo, man. Memphis, Rajon Rondo, backup point guard. So that backup unit would look something like D'Anthony Melton and, and Rondo in the backcourt. Ah, Rondo is gonna is gonna get um an offer or two or, or maybe more than that from different teams because of his play throughout the playoffs and and, and how good he was in his thirty four year old season, for sure. I don't know if Memphis is the right place. I think that Rondo will probably try to go to another team with contending in mind. Um, but shout out to Rondo, man. He's probably gonna get some money. I think if I'm not mistaken, he signed to the Lakers for like the minimum. So this season he's probably gonna get more than that after his play, which is great. And if Memphis is the place, I don't know. But I, him as a mentor to John Moran would be interesting. It definitely will be interesting. And I, I'd like that from, from that aspect alone. As a mentor for John Moran. W. Oh, that's I think that's what it's saying here. Ron will be a perfect fit in Memphis, uh, which is playoff aspiration, presumably wants to be a veteran point guard from John Moran to study. W. DeMar DeRozan for the Miami Heat. Um, this is probably like a sign and trade situation. Yeah. When you have like Kelly Olenek and then I think you still got like Myers Leonard's contract. So this is definitely a sign and trade opportunity unless they're saying DeMar DeRozan is going to turn down that player option and come in for the low low for the Miami Heat. He's making $27.7 million. Him as a fit. Okay, this guy's Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, DeMar DeRozan, Duncan Robinson, and Bam. Sheesh. A positionless basketball for sure. That's four guards. That's four guards at Bam Adebayo. Um, that would make them better for sure. De DeMar DeRozan and Jimmy Butler, there's like some overlap there that I don't like. As far as like, hey, heavy isolation players. Um, DeMar DeRozan had one of the most efficient isolation seasons from what I've heard this last year. I haven't looked at the numbers myself, but I, I heard it from a reliable source. I think there's a little bit of overlap there between him and Jimmy Butler as far as like not a great perimeter shooter. Sure, you're, you're surrounding him a great perimeter shooting in Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson. Um, but three out of your five starters aren't reliable from behind the arc. I, I mean, it, yes, it's good to get another name in DeMar DeRozan, but I think the fit will be a little bit weird personally. Uh, then we have Joe Harris with the, uh, I think Milwaukee, I think Joe Harris is going to be a guy to get some money, man. Joe Harris is a, a lethal, lethal shooter, but he would fit perfectly with Giannis and all of those things. I mean, you're talking about a guy that could just get the get the ball and shoot it no matter where he's at on the court and splash that thing. Jay Crowder for the Timberwolves, they need that versatility at the four alongside um, Carthony Towns. Jay Crowder from an ESPN video I watched the other day, he was one of the least efficient corner three-point shooters in the regular season and got to the bubble and was the most efficient corner three-point shooter. Gritty, um, not going to take any other stuff from opposing teams, knock down his shots, play his good defense. He would work perfectly with the Minnesota Timberwolves, I think. Next, Surge and the Pelicans. Okay, I I'm going to just keep saying this, but this is a match. But every time I hear the name Surge and the Pelicans, I think W. Stretch the floor. Great defender alongside Zion. And all the things you want from a guy alongside Zion, Serge Ibaka brings that. And he's coming off basically his best season as an NBA pro, offensively at least. I would love this signing. I would love this signing for them. And, and I believe that Stan Van Gundy would have him looking nice. Derrick Jones Jr. for the Knicks. Sure, why not? The Knicks just have are one of those teams that will potentially have money depending on what they do with those options on, on, on some of their players. Um, Barrett Jones Jr., young player, he come into the team and, and gets significant minutes on the team. I mean, he was just played for a team where he didn't get that many minutes. He's only 23 years old. He's getting better every single season. Sure, why not take that shot? Um, Malik Beasley for OKC Thunder. I just got the notification about Malik Beasley going through some stuff and maybe he's not going to be a free agent signing, so I'll skip it. Uh, next, Jordan Clarkson for the Orlando Magic. Don't they already have that in Terrence Ross? Or is Terrence Ross a free agent and I just don't know? About? I think Terrence Ross is not a free agent. Don't they already have just like good bench scoring right now from a guard position? Imagine a team of Terrence Ross and Jordan Clarkson on the court together. They're going to be fighting over the ball. I think Orlando should be going opposite direction. Jeff Teague for the 76ers. Sure, bring in some playmaking. One thing they were missing, man, when um when Ben Simmons went down with his injury, we were like, okay, who's going to be the playmaker? And I think the first game, it was... Tobias Harris put up like eight assists. And like, ah, I mean, that's cool, but like, not a playmaker. Jeff T can be that guy, even though throughout the course of his career, there's been some seasons where he just doesn't like to play, make it seems like. Um, but backup point guard position is something they desperately need. And a cheap backup option could be Jeff T for sure. And he, and he could be a player uh, that helps. I'm interested in the Philly team. 
I might make a video tomorrow about Philly because they're doing some crazy things in the in the front office on the coaching staff, and uh, it's just like every single season they're one of the most intriguing teams in the NBA. It's just it's part of them now. Davis Bertens with the Suns, sheesh, that would be nasty. Um, I do like the I love the lineup of Mikael Bridges and, and Cam Johnson starting personally. Um, but Davis Bertens, a Latvian laser, he ain't get that nickname from from for nothing. Uh, literally a laser from all the points in the course uh, of the court. Just crazy, crazy three-point shooter. Gallinari. Now, Gallinari is one of the most interesting free agents. I also was thinking about putting together a video of, like, my top five most interesting free agents, and maybe I'll still do that. And spoiler alert, um, and it's not just based on overall talent, but I think Gallinari is the most interesting free agent this offseason because he has said in the interview that, like, I've got – basically, he said, I've got the bag throughout my, my NBA career. I'm willing to take less to go to a contender. And I'm like, word, okay, but how much less are we talking, Gallinari? How much less are we talking? Are we talking about you getting a mid-level ex exception for some team and going to try to win a championship or or a little bit more than that? If it's mid-level ex exception situation, golly, Gallinari can go to so many different teams and be like the X factor, the reason to put them over the hump because Gallinari is that good of an NBA player. So maybe that video will come out soon. Um... Gallinari is probably going to be number one, number two on my list. And him in Portland will bring another dynamic, something they've been missing that third option in Portland for the last five years or so. Um, and Gallinari would come in and instantly be that. And with Nurkic and then I guess Rodney Hood is still the guy. I don't know who's at the three nowadays. Um, instantly become a better team than the team that they were this year. Derek Favors with the Sacramento Kings. I mean, I guess so. I don't have an opinion on the Sacramento Kings. Then we have Bogdanovich with the Spurs. Yes, they do love their, their foreign-born players. That is a fact. But everything I've read is that the Kings are hell-bent on matching every any and everything that has to do with Bogdanovich, especially because Buddy Hill wants out. The Raptors bringing Freddie back. Um, shout out to Fred Van Vliet. Bet on yourself. Whether it costs them 15 20 or $25 million per year, the Raptors need to keep Fred Van Vliet in town. I feel that way as well, um, especially if they want to continue to compete. And that's I think that is their goal. Um, Freddie is a, a crucial, crucial part to this team's success and losing them would hurt them badly. Now for a team like that, do you want to invest potentially 25 million in him is, as as I don't know, but if their goal is to potentially continue to compete, maybe you do, especially, yeah, I saying right here with Kyle Lowry entering his final years of his contract, this could be your starting shooting guard and potentially going to your starting point guard once Freddie's off the books and, um, oh, not Freddie, but Kyle is off the books, Utah, Dwight Howard. Um, they had like Ed Davis and Tony Bradley playing backup center this season. And both of them were like kind of bad. And Dwight Howard was kind of good this year. Then lastly, Hassan Whiteside for the Washington Wizards. Another intriguing team because I believe that Bradley Beal and John Wall can come back and look amazing together. I'm not saying John Wall individually is going to look amazing, but together they will look good. Thomas Bryant has potential offensively, but defensively his feet don't move at all. He's just kind of there defensively. And Hassan Whiteside, say what you want about him. He can protect the paint. He can. How do they do this? Because John Wall has a super max contract and Bradley Beal has a max contract. And I don't know how they make it work financially. I wish he would have gave us like, this is what he was signed for to make it realistic. But he didn't really do that. Um, good article, Greg. Good article, Greg. I thought you made some very good points throughout the course of this. And I appreciate that. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, subscribe. All of the stuff YouTubers usually tell you to do. And I'll be back maybe tomorrow, maybe later. I don't know.